Welcome to another episode of GeekOutdoors.com. In this shotgun tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to do smooth zoom in and outs or dynamic zoom. Now, there are a number of ways in which you can do this, but the two methods I'm going to show you here today, they're fairly easy to do. And once you get used to it, it'll be pretty much second nature for you. And so the first thing you want to do is bring down a video or image clip down to your project timeline, which I've already done here. And once you do that, go ahead and select your clip and then choose this filters tab here or you could choose filters up here. And once you do that, you can add a filter. And so the filter you wanna look for is under video and it's called rotation and scale. You could just type in scale and there's rotate and scale. All you have to do is double click on it. And now we have our filter on our clip. Now, once you do that, you could go ahead and go over to your keyframes tab, either go down here or you could go up here. And now we can add our actual zoom in and zooms out. Now, the first thing I'm going to show you is the very easy way in which you can do that. And so all you have to do is go to the point where you want to add your zoom. So let's just say I want to add it right here. And you could adjust this scale option here. You can just go ahead and increase it. And now we have our scale. And what you'll notice is for the entire clip, this is the scale percentage that's kept consistently throughout. But that's not really what we want. What we want is for it to zoom in on this particular part of our video. And so the way in which you could do that is we could choose these little two circles as you see here. Now, if you pull this over to the right, you'll notice that now there's this gray area here and the same thing goes right here. So this is the zoom out portion. So what this has effectively done is it has created a keyframe right here. So this is where it's gonna zoom in to 225%. Now, if you go back, it's actually gonna go from its initial value of 100%, and then it's gonna zoom into that value, and it's gonna stay there, and then eventually, starting right here, it's gonna zoom out. So if you notice that, the percentages decrease, and then eventually it'll zoom out. So that's how that works, and if you wanted to adjust the speed in which it zoomed in and zoomed out, you can simply drag these further to slow down the zoom, so we do this right here and also zoom out. We could slow that down. So let's see how this looks like. And so now the zoom should come in a lot slower. And then it should zoom out slower as well. And you could adjust this as you need. And then if you wanted to zoom in really quick, you could simply shorten this window right here. Do the same thing here for you to zoom out. Then we'll go back here. And we'll go ahead and zoom in. As you can see, it went in really quick to that 225.2%. And then when it gets to zoom out, there it is. That was fairly quick. And so as you can see, that's a really easy way in which you could do that. And you could also do the same thing to these other values. You could rotate it, do X and Y. So say you wanted to zoom in like right here. And let's go ahead and zoom into the top portion. So we'll go ahead and change the Y offset. So that's kind of what I want right there. It's not exactly perfect, but you get the idea. So now if we were to do this again, I'm going to slow this down a little bit. Same thing here. So in this case, you can get a smooth zoom in and out on the area that you want. And although it's not quite perfect, you kind of get the idea. And if you did want to, you know, reset these values, all you have to do is click on this right here to reset to default. And it'll go back to its original value. And then you could also pull these back right here. And it will just stay the way it was previously without any type of zooming in or zooming out. For the best value in domain names, check out Namecheap, where you can get a domain for an entire year for less than $10, plus get WhoisGuard privacy protection for free. For more information, check out the affiliate link in the description area below. So that's a quick and easy way to add smooth dynamic zooms to your clips. But now let's look at a more advanced method that'll give you more control over your keyframes and the animations between each keyframe. And we do that by using the keyframe properties. And so very similar to what we did before, you would choose the area where you wanted to zoom or scale in, but instead of adjusting the values right away, you wanna first add a keyframe. So we'll go ahead and do that right here. So now you have this brand new track that's been created, which has all the keyframe properties for the scale or zoom parameter. So in this case, you can now adjust your zoom value. So I'm gonna go ahead and adjust this. So now it is zoomed in. However, the bad thing is it's zoomed in at this value for the entirety of the clip, which isn't what we want. 
what we want is to start at its original value, zoom in, and then zoom out. And so we do that by using keyframes. So if we go here to the point where we wanted to start zooming in, let's just say right here, we'll go ahead and add a keyframe. But in this case, we want it to be its original value. And the easiest way to do that is to choose reset to default. So now you'll notice that there is this curve that goes upward. So if you go back to the beginning, press play, it's at 100%, then it zooms in, and it stays at that value throughout the entire clip. But well, now we want it to zoom back out. Let's just say right here. And we do the same thing as we did before. We're going to reset it to default. So now you have this whole curve where it zooms in, then zooms back out. So we'll go here. We'll press play. Zooms in. And then zooms out. So here we have our dynamic zoom in and zoom out. However, it's not as smooth as it could be. Because the default keyframe type or the curves here it is at linear. So if you right click on this keyframe, you choose keyframe type, it's linear. So let's go ahead and choose smooth. We'll do that right here. And we'll also do that at these other points. We'll say smooth. Then we'll go here as well. And you'll notice that things are now curved. And if you watch the same thing from the beginning, the zoom in and zoom out is a lot smoother. So that's how you could have a smoother zoom in and zoom out. But we're not done there because now, say for example, you're zoomed in, right? Well, this isn't a good zoom in and you could definitely adjust the overall X and Y values. And we can do something very similar to what we did before. I'm gonna go back here at this point and I wanted to start at zero for the X and Y offsets. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a keyframe here and here. So now we have keyframe properties for each one of these values. So I'm gonna go here to this keyframe and this is where I want to add my different X and Y coordinates. So we'll go ahead and adjust this. I'm going to move up. So that's zoomed in pretty high. And then I'm going to move this over to the left a little bit. Okay, that's still zoomed in quite a bit. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and zoom out right here. So let's zoom back out. All right. A little bit better okay and then we'll go here and we'll add another keyframe for the x and y that goes back to its original value okay so now let's watch that again so it zooms in then it zooms out and so that's a way in which you can have way more control over your keyframes and animations and as you work with this a lot more it just looks a lot better once you do spend the time to do this. However, the simple method also works as well. But once you start using these keyframes a lot more, you will be able to apply these same principles to other filters beyond the rotate and scale. So that is how you do smooth zoom in and out or dynamic zoom within Shotcut. I've shown you the easy method and the more advanced method. Now, if you did have any thoughts on this or you had any other ways in which you could do smooth zoom in and out, be sure to leave that in the comments area below. And if you wanted to see more of my Shotcut tutorial tips and tricks, I do have an entire playlist. I'll leave that in the description area as well if you're interested. So as always, if you did get value out of these videos, be sure to share, like, and subscribe. Hey geeks, if you are a creative geek like me and you wanted to learn how to create content on YouTube and other places on the internet, then check out my Go Content Creators Group where you'll get access to additional videos and content for all the creative geeks out there. And the best part of it is, all of this is free. Simply head over to the link below, check out my page, and sign up for my Go Content Creators Group. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the other side.